Welcome everyone to Build 50. Seemingly a milestone and people sometimes ask, do the build numbers represent the amount of systems that you've built? And certainly not. They're only the systems that we have time to put on the channel. The vast majority of systems that we've built, we don't even have video of and a lot of them we don't even have photos of. And this mostly just comes down to time, but it's also occasionally because of NDAs. You know, if we're doing builds for big companies, like we've done a lot for AMD, we may not be allowed to show them at all, or maybe not for a certain amount of time. And then we kind of just don't film them because usually those projects were just flat out. And maybe we're doing, you know, similar builds again that we don't show. But yeah, there, there've been so many that I have lost count. I don't even know how many systems I've built anymore, but it is well into the many hundreds. So this is a high-end Wraith build and it's custom. It has custom paint. This is an effect that I've done before. DNA silver flare, silver metallic base, and then uh, candy orange over the top, which is semi-transparent. I just really like the candies. And it's quite high-end. We have the Titan RTX, we have the AMD Ryzen 3950X, the Asus Crosshair 8 Impact, which is a DTX motherboard. We have a lot of storage here, two Samsung 860 Pro 4 terabyte SSDs, and also two Samsung 970 Evo 2TB M.2s. For the power supply, we have the Corsair SF750, and we have 32 gigabytes of G-Skill memory. If I was going to choose one thing to talk about when it comes to building into Wraith, it would be leaving the outer panels off for as long as you can. Building ITX systems, it's always tight. Building liquid cooled ITX systems can be very challenging to just to get your hands in and to install components, to route cables. So just keep the outer panels off for as long as you can. Don't install components until you have to. So component order is really important. and. The best thing is to get the radiators in first, I find, and get those tight connections from the radiators to the distribution plate. And you can see the two closest ones, which I've already done, they just come down to fittings selection. If you get the right fittings, it's going to make your life a lot easier. And I suggest telescopic fittings or D-plugs where you can just push them on. So I'm only installing the motherboard now that I've installed both of the radiators. The pump is in. You can see that I actually had the drive cage in, but then took it out. So you know, always finding a little bit better ways of doing things. 
but just get that component order right. I'm actually putting it on the back panel here, but I end up taking it off again because I need to get access to something else again. But yeah, being able to take the panels off and on certainly helps. So I like to experiment with coolant a fair bit because it's easy to change and I thought that this would be too subtle, too understated, but I wanted to try Mayhem's Pastel Black in this loop, but sure enough it really blends with the components, it doesn't show off the transparency of the case, the distribution plate because it's opaque, and so we're going to be swapping this coolant for orange and not pastel, but we'll save that for part two. <laughs> 